Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Algorithm Minds. My name is Asan Khuram and in this channel I teach programming skills in Python, MATLAB and R programming. I also teach theoretical concepts as well as practical programming skills in data science, data analysis. So I request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell icon button. So I have been producing a series of tutorial video where I actually teach you how about the optimizations problem. In the previous lecture, I told you about mixed integer linear programming and how we can actually solve that problem with the help of uh, MATLAB function int link prog. That being said, in today's tutorial, we are going to use uh, solve the same problem, but now with a different approach, which is called genetic algorithm. So I will briefly explain you about the problem statement. Then we will move towards the, the practical programming section and where we implement genetic algorithm to solve this optimization problem. In this case, we will be minimizing the objective function. So if you haven't watched the previous video about mixed integer linear programming, I request you to go and watch that video as well. It is a highly resourceful video. I will put the link in the description for you. That being said, let's move on and actually discuss about our problem statement. So, so this is the objecting function we, which we want to minimize. Okay, so we have like 8x1, x2, and 3x3. So our objective function consists of three variables and we want to minimize it. And uh, out of these three variables, we say that x1 is continuous. It means that it can be a floating value, 5.5, 6.5, 3, 3.2, 3.9, and so on. And x2 is an integer. It means that it can only have a value of 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. And x3 is a binary digit, means that it can only have a value of 0 and 1. So x1 is continuous, x2 is an integer, and x3 is binary. Now, after going through the variables, we have a set of inequality constraints for this objective function that implies a constraint on the solution. Okay, so whenever we are going to find a solution, they will be constrained by these inequality constraints. So what are these inequality constraints? So we have like x1, 2x2, minus 3x is greater than and equal to minus 14. So why are they called inequality constraint? Because they are in the form of greater than or equal to. And we have like minus 4x1 plus minus x2 plus 3x3 less than equal to minus 33. And so on for the last one, which is 2x1, x2 and x plus x3 less than equal to 20. But beside inequality constraint, we also have equality constraint in our problem set. So these are the equality constraint. We have like x1 plus x3 is equal to 5. We manipulated a value of this 5 to be 5.5. So in order to get a feasible solution because with the five we were not able to get a feasible solution that being say these are the boundaries that are bound to it means that x1 is should must always be a positive value or continuous x2 is also be a positive value and x3 uh, is uh, zero or one okay so these are the bounds that are being implied on the variables x1 x2 and x3 that being said now the first thing we need to do is to convert uh, this inequality constraints into readable form that will be read by the function MATLAB. So in this case, we have to represent this inequality constraint in the form of AX is equal to B. That being say, where A is the coefficient of the variables in the inequality constraint, okay? Where each row represents the each inequality constraint. So for example, row one will represent the equality constraint of uh, first constraint and row two will represent this second one and row three will represent the third one. So here we have formulated our A, which is stands for the coefficients of uh, variables in the inequality constraint. So if we have like uh, something like x1 plus 2x2 minus x3, here it is in the form of greater than and equal to. In order to feed it into MATLAB function, which will actually implement genetic algorithm, we have to convert it in the form of AX is equal less than equal to B. So in that case, we have to convert this sign into less than. Then that can be easily be done by multiplying both sides by minus. Uh, and then with this way, we have like the coefficients of like minus X1, minus X2 plus X1. That being said, the coefficients of uh, Next inequality constraint will be minus 4, minus 1, and plus 3. 
you can see that okay uh, we multiply by minus sign here so it is like that means that uh, it will be like plus 4 plus 1 and minus 3 so now the next thing we need to do is actually to convert this inequality constraint into a form that can be easily understand by the genetic algorithm functions of MATLAB. So we have to convert this inequality constraint in the form of AX is equal to B where A represents the coefficients of the variable uh, X1, X2 and X3 and uh, B represents their uh, inequality constraint value. In this case it will be like minus 14, minus 33 and 20. So keep that in mind we have to represent it in the form of AX less than equal to B. In that case, we have to actually convert this greater than sign is equal to in less than equal to sign. So that can be easily be done by multiplying both sides by negative sign. So we, in this case, when we apply both sides with negative sign, then we have like minus x1, minus 2x2 and plus x1 less than equal to 14. Okay. And uh, the coefficients of uh, second row will be minus 4, minus 1 and plus 3. And the coefficients of last row will be 2, 1, 1. Okay. So that's how we formulate the coefficients of inequality constraint in the form of a matrix that is three rows and three column. In the same way, we are going to formulate the B matrix that constrain the constraint of these inequality equations which are minus 14 when we multiply by minus 14 it will be 14 and minus 33 and 20 so that's how you formulate those uh, inequality constraint once we done that we will apply the same logic uh, to equality constraint with the variable name aq and beq in that case we see that we have x1 plus x3 in that case we don't have c and x2 because here the coefficient of x2 will be zero by default and uh, the for coefficients of this equation will be one zero comma one representing the variables of the uh, coefficients of variables that being said beq in our case will be 6.5 I told you like we change its value from 5 to something greater in order to get a more feasible solution that's it so we have formulated our inequality constraint we have formulated our equality constraint let's move on and actually define the boundaries okay so here in the boundaries are such that we have x1 is greater than 0 x2 is greater than 0 or equal to 0 and x3 is 0 to 1 so in that case uh, the boundaries will be defined in the matrix lb and ub where lb represent the boundaries of of uh, lower boundaries and ub represent the upper boundaries of the variable x1 x2 and x3 okay so we have like 0 0 0 uh, it means the boundary lower boundaries of uh, our variable and we have ub i is equal to iinf inf in starting for infinity because they are greater than zero and they can be any value. So we write it infinity. Infinity for the last one with this value must be uh, one or zero. Okay, that being said, the next thing we need to uh, tell uh, genetic function in MATLAB is to tell that this following variable is an integer variable, okay? So this can be defined by passing the index of uh, the variable in our case x2 is an integer and x3 is also an integer okay so if x1 was also an integer we would have write something like one two three but right now we have only two variables that's our integer x2 uh, and x3 okay so that can be defined in the variable encode is equal to uh, matrix of two one rows and two column okay so now this is just a brief recap you have defined inequality constraint you have defined equality constraint and you have defined the upper boundary and lower boundary of the variables x1 x2 and x3 and finally you define okay which value variables will be going to be a uh, 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 integer value okay so you have also defined it in in con that being said, let's move on and at least briefly I'll go over through the options that we use in genetic algorithm uh, or the option that we feed as input to the function or GA of MATLAB. So here we are passing option, we are creating initializing a variable name options and we are creating its value is equal to opti 
m options and with after we are passing round brackets then within the round bracket we are passing multiple input arguments so here first input argument is gna this stands for genetic algorithm so it means that we are telling that this options are set for genetic algorithm the next option we are defining population size so this defines the number of individuals in each generation by setting population size 20 we are telling ga to use 20 individuals per generation uh, and uh, moving on to max generation here we set its value to 10 uh, this specifies the maximum number of generation ga will run a uh, generation is essentially a cycle where the algorithm selects crossovers and mutates individuals to produce a new set of solution then we have display <coughs> is equal to iteration this means that we actually want to display the iteration of genetic algorithm uh, solution that is currently being done by uh, this MATLAB function G here. Then we have like plot function. We actually want to visualize those uh, plot values uh, in the form of plot. So this PL plot function, this is a function that MATLAB uses to plot the best fitness or the best objective function value at each uh, iteration, okay, or generation. So once you have defined the options here, <clears throat> the next thing you are going to do is, is we are going to call the function GA. Uh, first of all, we will define two output arguments for this function GA. First one is the X, which will contain the values of X1, X2, and X3. And the second value is actually the minimum value of the function that we are going to get by the optimization of genetic algorithm. So in order to implement a genetic algorithm in MATLAB, we are going to use this function GA. And uh, we are passing it an input argument which is at the rate objective function. Now you might be wondering where is, is this objective function? So for MATLAB environment, we always have to define a uh, function at the end of the script, okay? That's why, <coughs> that's why here I have defined the objective function. So this is how you define a function. If you don't know how to define a function, I have highly detailed tutorial on function that are uh, suitable for any beginner who want to learn MATLAB programming from scratch. So this is how you define a function. We have a uh, uh, output obg is equal to function name. Then it takes the input algorithm. In our case, it's an x, which is a, a row of which is a row of three variables. Okay, x1, x2, and x3. So here, objective function is equal to eight multiplied by x1 plus one multiplied by x2 plus three multiplied by x3. So this is the Please excuse me. So these are the objective function. If you recall and go towards our problem statement, we have this objective function to minimize 8x1 plus 2x plus x2 plus 3x3. And that is exactly the same objective function we have defined here. 8x1 plus 1x2 plus 3x3. So coming back to our GA function, so the first input argument will be uh, the objective function with the function handle at the rate sign. The next input argument is defined. You define the how much, how many in the input arguments are there, how many uh, variables are there in the objective function. We have three variables in the objective function. So here we define three. Then we will define the in, uh, inequality constraint variables A and B. And after that, we will define a equality constraint variable AEQ and BEQ. And then finally, we will define LB and UB. After we define that, we left one option to be blank. And the next thing we are going to define is the end code, which resembles, which uh, accounts for what are the integer values or uh, integer variables in the objective function. And finally, we pass option as an input argument to our function GA. So once you've done that, you can happily plot our value. So basically when I'm run it, when I will run it, it will show me a plot of the best fit function as well. And finally, once we have calculated the values, we will display the X values we are based on which we will have the minimum function and we will also display the function values as well. So let me just run this block of code for you. So let me just run this code for you so we can visualize our results and see the best fit float function. Now you can see that the best value was found 55 and on each generation is finding and mutating.
So this is the bus fit plot function. And after that, we can see our uh, visualization. Uh, we can see our plot values as well. We have like uh, uh, the values of variable x1, x2, and x3. And based on those values, we have like the objective function 50, 55. So that's it for now. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If you have any questions regarding today's tutorial, feel free to write down your comments. I will be happy to help you out. Thank you for joining me and I will catch you soon in the next video.